Good. Thanks, Mark. So this was the intro that I was meant to give this morning had technology cooperated, um, but it's kind of good having it now just before we have a discussion. Um, so I'm just going to briefly overview exactly because John's been asking what is Maxima's mission a statement and I think all the, the details are here. So uh, I think it will help um, what it is, why we felt we, the need to establish it, who's involved, what our capability areas are. Although I should say our capability areas are uh, we're, we're continually searching for um, fleshing that out and tomorrow's day is about um, expanding that capability to find out more about who's here on campus and the interesting things that are happening um, and some of the, the challenges that we see. So as you all know by now, uh, Maxima is the Monash Academy for Cross and Interdisciplinary Mathematical Applications, um, but we're really trying to maximise impact through mathematics. And so our mission, we have three main things we're focusing on. One is uh, to innovate at that interface between theoretical mathematics and interdisciplinary applications and that includes industry industry applications as well. So we're really interested in those those situations and I asked our speakers today to, to highlight how working on some problem from another field um, has advanced mathematics but also how um, new mathematical ideas can, can benefit the application area. We're interested in that interface. Uh, we're focused also on um, not just us doing it all but looking at the pipeline of where's this next generation coming through who's going to take this this um, what I think is a it is an important modern agenda uh, moving forward. It's a it's a 21st century <laughs> mathematics focus. Where's this next generation coming from, and how are we training them um, to? You know, we need to look at our curriculum and ask whether or not we're teaching our students the right things. Uh, and also, we have an important role to play in just the the uh, public awareness of the importance of mathematics. Um, and there's there's a lot you know being said in the media these days about um, kids and students and uh, uh, teachers and parents and, and students not fully um, feeling comfortable with mathematics or, or choosing to continue with it. Uh, and so there's, there's a role that Maxima can play in sharing success stories and, and highlighting the, the critical importance. So why did we establish it? Um, first of all, because here on campus, we saw that there are lots of researchers around the university that uh, certainly when I became head of the maths department in 2009, knocking on my door saying, um, we want to talk to mathematicians, we think we've got a really interesting mathematical problem. Now many times it's not, but they wanted to at least have the conversation. And so having mathematicians that are willing to listen and have an open door and are able to listen to the problem, translate it into, does it map to any part of mathematics? Do we have the capability? Can we help? Um, I saw that as an important thing that we need to do. Um, and, and, you know, these are outstanding researchers on campus leading in their fields that, that say that they need help with mathematicians, from mathematicians. Um, and also recognising that the kinds of mathematicians that can sometimes help are not just located in that very ugly building over there where we live. Um, there are math mathematically trained people right across this university and Maxima's trying to reach out to all of those people. You may have a PhD in mathematics. Many people have PhDs from that ugly building over there but now happen to work over in IT or econometrics or engineering. And so it's about harnessing that full mathematical talent pool that we have here at Monash. Uh, we're lucky that it's so rich, um, but our silo structure sometimes gets in our way. So Maxima was attempting to bridge all of that, to create an umbrella over that capability. Of course, um, during the time that we were establishing Maxima, we had the government introducing um, ERA, the Excellence for Research in Australia, which is not about assessing how well an academic department does. It's about assessing how well a discipline does at a university level. So how strong is the mathematical sciences here at Monash? And we have to acknowledge when we see the publications coming in, and many of them are coming from civil engineering and econometrics and other places, we have to acknowledge that our discipline of mathematical sciences is spread across the university. And so we do have to, to um, you strengthen and unite that capability and communicate that capability. We also have um, a good situation here at Monash where we have a lot of our best students are double degree students. They love their maths but they want to do something else as well. They love biology, um, engineering, these kinds of things. And so exploiting the fact that we have very bright students who want to combine their mathematics with something else, it makes sense to start looking for ways that mathematics can influence other fields. Our students are curious about that and they want to see us leading by example. Uh, so there's a great opportunity um, to train students to participate um, as successful interdisciplinary team members and create pathways where they take their mathematics but then we help them find a, a direction where they can go with that. Uh, the maths department um, here at Monash had been rebu rebuilding at the time. It was a really good opportunity to showcase the, the new recruits that we'd, we'd got and, and how effective they can be and to grow in new directions. And we had past successes where we had atmospheric science and astrophysics 
uh, back in the 1970s where applied mathematicians had collaborated successfully and these areas had matured into their own interdisciplinary unique strengths, so much so that they are ready to be set free from the maths department and, and a year or two ago they were set free and so it's an opportunity for applied maths here at Monash to rebuild and say well what's going to be the, ne the next interdisciplinary success, is it mathematical biology or you know what's next and how do we nurture that. And finally, it was 2013 when we launched, and it was the International Year of Mathematics of Planet Earth, and we wanted to do something to make a statement that we think math is important for Earth and everything that goes on on Earth. Um, and so uh, that was largely a, an outreach vehicle. Um, so it seemed like a, a good time to do it. So our strategic goals then, we focus on collaborative research, industry partnerships, education and training to create that new generation of mathematical minds, and outreach uh, success stories. And so with the, collaborative oops, with the collaborative research, we're really um, trying to position ourselves a a as a leader um, and a catalyst in that kind of mathematical innovation. Um, so providing a gateway to access mathematical minds that, that can tackle these problems. Um, so those are the four areas that we focus on. So here's a, a diagram that sort of shows how we see ourselves working. So someone comes and knocks on the door or emails us and says, hey, I've got a problem. I think a mathematician might be able to help me. And the first question is, can existing mathematics help? Do we already, so John had this nice analogy in his opening about cranking the handle. Do we have, is there a handle <laughs> that we can turn and do we know how to turn it? Um, if we, if there's an existing handle and we can crank out a solution, uh, we have to say, we can help you. Should we, should we be spending our time doing that as academics in university? This is, this is another question. But we do have Maxima established as a university research platform. So here at Monash with research infrastructure, platforms are not just um, synchrotrons and microscopes. I was arguing for a long time about that platforms are, or research platforms are also people infrastructure. So Max, Maxima got uh, funding from the university's research platforms. And this enables us to do the cranking the handle, the stuff that we already know how to do as a training opportunity for, for people as well. So it's consulting work, it's contract research, and training for people who say, you know, I've got people who've um, got PhDs in pure mathematics who say, I'd like to transition to become more applied. Can you give me some projects to work on for the experience? So it's that kind of opportunity. For things where we already know how to do it, it's just a question of how we're gonna get it done. But if existing mathematics can't help or it's not immediately obvious to us that there, there might be a handle but no one's ever put their hand on it, we don't know how to do it, it's an opportunity for us to learn something new, or maybe there's no handle at all and we have to create new mathematics to, to solve this problem, then this is great. This is, this is what we're really looking for because this, as a university, this is what drives us, um, where we're trying to really exploit that interface where we want to solve a problem that's going to advance mathematics as well. So we have collaborative research and we have a whole heap of collaborative PhD topics, um, 16 at the moment with students on them and another 23 where we're, still, we're looking for students. And of course this, ma this mathematical talent pool we have at Monash uh, within Maxima, that the, the capability we're trying to harness is not just coming from mathematicians in the School of Mathematical Sciences but our other departments, the, the mathematically trained departments as well and so it's about harnessing and understanding, understanding that. So who are we? Um, we're a friendly group of people. Look how friendly we look. We're very approachable. Uh, people knock on our door. Um, and, uh, and so I'm director and Andreas is deputy director charged with our sort of industry partnerships because he's got loads of industry experience. Marianne's our program manager. Um, we have Mahesh, who most of you know because he helped um, with lots of the logistics for today, who's our research partnerships officer. Uh, Mehmet is our statistical consulting manager. From the startup funding we got, we've got about six new recruits. Um, there were already a bunch of mathematicians in the School of Mathematical Sciences whose work was quite well aligned to this vision, um, many of whom I recruited while I was head of school um, anyway. And then there's a bunch of people around the university. We don't have a good number on this. It's like TC's shaking the box with the coins in there. I, <laughs> uncertainty quantification, I need to estimate how many people are actually out there across the university that are mathematically trained that, that share our passion. Um, that's what we're trying to do, especially tomorrow. Um, having said that, we've only invited a handful of people to give us talks. There were so many more people we could have invited. Uh, there's a bunch of um, uh, postdocs funded by grants that Maxim has obtained and, and 16 PhD students jointly supervised got 30 seconds left and so basically our capability areas um, we have loosely grouped in these six areas you can call them what what you like we're also keen to refine this list as we understand our capability here on campus more um, we will revisit this list there's um, are we out of brochures there's some glossy brochures somewhere and um, they're already out of date um, 
but so we, we need to revisit that. I'm running out of time. Let me just say that um, in the in the three years, here we go, out of time. In the three years that we've been running, um, we've got about 32 new collaborations here on campus uh, with interdisciplinary colleagues at various stages of development. Most of them do have a joint PhD proposal, either with a student started or in the pipeline. Uh, nine new industry partnerships, um, 16 new PhD students, uh, 23 more awaiting. Uh, we've introduced some new undergraduate um, coursework where we train about 100 students a year in team-based team problem solving with projects that we've sourced from around the university um, and some grant income over, over five million. Uh, so we have current co collaborations with researchers from all of those ologies and, uh, and other departments. Um, let me just say that another motivating factor here is the federal government's um, push for engagement and impact and so that's coming the, the assessment of, of how well we engage and have impact um, and so this will be a useful discussion point I, I think of how we can use Maxima to to drive uh, the university but certainly the the mathematical part of the university's um, in, engagement and impact uh, so Maxima will support uh, first of all mathematicians or anyone who's mathematically trained who wants to find ways to collaborate for impact uh, we will support non-mathematicians who think they've got an interesting maths question they'd like to speak to somebody about. Um, and the students who are the, our next generation who, who want to train in this direction. Um, so in terms of engaging across Monash, we have this capability mapping exercise that we're completing this year. Um, Mahesh has probably been in contact with, <coughs> with many people. The Stokay Symposium today and tomorrow is, is a major part of that. It's an opportunity for us to meet some of the people. Um, I'll just briefly also mention 15 minutes of fame was something we, we initiated last year. 15 minutes, find, find a mathematical expert. You come along, you talk to a room full of mathematicians about your problem. We do all the follow-up and see if anyone's interested and, and, and have follow-up meetings. So here's a, this is uh, Stuart Batten from Chemistry, one of the university's highly cited researchers, talking to us about interpenetrating networks of molecules and his belief that a new mathematical language is needed to describe this part of chemistry. Um, so uh, they don't look it, but they were actually really interested. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mark doesn't look so interested, but you were you were interested, right? <laughs> um, but you know, he came with props, and it was really interesting. Um, so anyway, that's the kind of thing that we've been doing, and um, that's that's all I wanted to do by way of introduction. And so hopefully, that's useful background for our discussion. <laughs>